Welcome to our live broadcast today from the National Association of Broadcasters show. We're in the studio experience powered by HP and Intel. My first guest of the day is Patrick Yu, who is the Vice President of Post-Production with Pop TV. Nice Hi. to have you on the program. Thank you. Good morning. So welcome. Thanks. So how long have you been in the production business? In post, I've been about 2013, uh, 2003, so 14, 15 years, wow. 15 years, so 2003. Yeah, and then before that I was on set doing production, so oh, wow. 80 and production ops on that side too. Okay, when did you get into sort of the film, TV business? 2004, I moved to LA and started then. And mostly in television too, and some film? Television and small independent movies. Okay. So when I was on set, bread and butter was one to two million. Uh, so MOWs and DVD International, stuff like that. So a lot of standard definition, and then you kind of yep. moved into high def. Yeah, and when know. I got to post, I started with standard definition. And, and then uh, tape machines when you first started. Yeah, yeah. I was shocked by how much tape machines cost, because I, I didn't know that. And so the first thing was in post was a friend of mine was starting up an uh, office, a post house. And says so the first thing I did do is buy a Digibeta deck. Right, it was like 55,000 or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we bought a used one for 30. <laughs> yeah, and right. it was like, we weren't making much and like barely making rent, but we had to dish out this money and, <laughs> and now it's just amazing. Yeah, it $100 to, gets you a high def recorder, so. Just things have changed so much, yes. right? Yes. So you saw that yes. whole digital uh, workflow yeah. evolution and. Yeah. Now, Pop TV, tell us about that a little bit. So Pop TV, we're a uh, cable network. We're in about 80 million homes. Isn't that amazing? 80 million yeah. homes, yeah. Yeah, so pretty good, just, pretty good distribution. Uh -huh. And um, we're half owned by Lionsgate and CBS. So great parents and uh, get access to some content for them. But they also allow us a lot of autonomy to develop shows. So our bread and butter right now is uh, original programming and syndicated shows. So the sh you also have sort of a pay, a premium kind of lineup? Is that what you do to bring in revenue or? Revenue is mostly uh, distribution and then after oh, through distribution? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes so sense. basic cable. So not like an HBO model with a subscriber, but uh, it's through I wasn't sure if you had some ads. content that was premium content or? We resell some originals, so. Oh, do you? Sell Netflix and iTunes, Amazon, all that stuff, yeah. So most of our originals go out that way as well. Well, you got great partners yeah. you know, above you to help, right? Yeah. That makes a big difference, yeah. especially in distribution, doesn't it? Yes, yep, yep, that's helped a lot. Let's get into the fun stuff, the technical stuff, no. since you're more into the post-production yeah. end of it. So what kind of systems do you guys use now? We use Apple for the computers, uh -huh. and then we use Adobe Premiere as okay, our Premiere. platform, uh -huh. and then we use Open Drives as our tier one storage. Okay. So we got to figure out how to talk you into up upgrading to HP Z8 workstations instead of those Apple machines, right? Oh, that, <laughs> it's killing me because the Mac Pros, they're so old. It's time, then, it's time to change, the, my friend, yeah. The, the rumor is that they won't release new ones for another year. Well, I don't know, it's just I, I rumor. Can't, I can't say, you know, because I haven't used Apple products in a yeah. long, long time. Yeah. Um, nothing bad about it, I used to be all. Like, yeah. That's all I used. But I do know a lot of folks who've told me that because of the configurations in an HPZ workstation, dual Xeon processors, yeah. you know, just the whole way it's set up, that they get incredible performance as compared to other options available to yeah, them. Absolutely. So um, anyway, but. I've seen other people have really good success, success with that. Mm -hmm. And those Z workstations, I've heard they're, they're amazing. Yeah. And you can really pack them out with whatever you want, so. We, we've been so I've blessed. been very tempted, yeah. very tempted. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we use them, so after the yeah. interview, I can tell you anything you want about <laughs> our experiences with them. Awesome. And I like the thin clients, too. Have you ever seen those yet, the thin clients? No. Yeah, so instead of, well, the way I used to work was I'd have two workstations at my desk. Because mm -hmm. one workstation would kick off and be doing stuff and rendering, yep. and I didn't yep. want to mess with that, so I'd have another one. Yeah. And then I'd just switch between the two. Yeah. So now we put those all into a server area, uh, and a thin client is just a little tiny box. Oh, it's, yeah. It's fanless. Yep. There's no issues at all. And it's silent. And it took me like three weeks before I said, oh my gosh. You know, I'm just, it's silent. So there's yeah. no noise in the room anymore. Yeah. No heat from yep. the workstations. Because the GPUs create a lot yeah. of heat in the CPU, yeah, yeah. right? But um, something else to look at, we have one here. We're hanging two 4K monitors off of it. It's worthwhile looking at. Do you guys do color critical monitors as well for what you're doing, or? Yeah, right now we, we rely on um, uh, Flanders Scientific for the broadcast monitor part. Mm -hmm. But um, I know about the Dream Color, and those are really nice. 
Well, now they self-calibrate. I heard about the new one. They just announced it. I, I, did, I just heard about it. Yeah. Like overnight, they wake themselves up, warm up, monitor comes out, calibrate, and then you're done. Yeah, you just it's schedule amazing. it. So you say, yeah. hey, every first Tuesday of the month, yeah. whatever, uh, one o'clock in the morning, warm yourself up, calibrate, yeah. close yourself down. And then you can set up scripting, I believe, so you can say, okay, Rec 709, you can have all the different standards you're interested oh, in. Wow. And then it can calibrate to all those nice. automatically. Yeah. So you're doing, from what I can tell, a lot of programs, yes. which means a lot of data, right? Yeah. A yeah, lot. so sort of data size, where are you guys living at that, if, we, if you can talk about that? Yeah, so we do a lot of synchronous shows. So we have, like, e right now we have ER, Without a Trace, and we've done Baywatch, and Anatone 1, all, all kinds of old shows, and we get those as a big bunch. And so it's a lot of data. And we have our open drive is about 360 terabytes. 360 terabytes. Yeah, we That's getting through. serious. It's yeah. a fair amount of storage, yeah. Yeah, it's not petabyte region, but yeah. it's not your 20 terabyte local storage thing, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's quite a bit of storage, and we use LTO to back up uh, off of that, and we have six petabytes of storage there. Do you have it so. tiered, your storage? So you have like a tiered one, super fast, and then a yep. mid-tier, which is all hard drive based? Yep. Okay, that makes and sense. And then LTO at the very end. Right, yeah. right, and then you just archive it there and... Yep. Yeah, yeah, so we have a tape library about 1,000 slots. A thousand slots. Yeah, so wow. you look at it like kind of three big fridges, uh -huh. stick them all together, and that's what we have. That's what you have? Yeah. Wow, how much does yeah. each cartridge hold now? LTO 7, I think it's about six terabytes. The nice thing is, if they're just sitting, they don't take any power. So right. Everything else is right. super easy. And they're faster now than they, you know, it's, yeah. it's a whole different world. I was really surprised last time yeah. I was looking at it. They're almost as fast as disk. Isn't that amazing? On, per platter. Um, yeah. But disk, the access time is, you know, latency is like nothing. So yeah. Yeah, but when you're just storing it as an archive. Yeah, it's cool storage, right? it's perfect. With open drives, did, yeah. where did you hear about them? How did you meet those guys? Yeah, it's interesting. So we started with standard def, IBM GPFS, then we went to um, store next with DDN storage. And when it was time to refresh that uh, with HD, our resellers, they brought open drives and says, here's a couple of solutions. You can get the big iron, big cost, or you can get the new guy, that's super fast, but might be more in your budget range. We looked around, and sure enough, the budget was good, uh -huh. and the performance was there for what we needed to do. And um, so that's how we found them. Kicked the tires, and uh, it was good. So did you get to meet some of the guys on the team? Cause yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, so, that give you more confidence? Yeah. Because those guys, Open Drives, one kicker for them was that they knew what I did. So a lot of times we talked to storage vendors, they didn't necessarily know my workflows. Exactly. But the, they knew. So I didn't have to explain, this is what my workflow is. I mean, the nitty gritty and the snowflake portion, yeah. But yeah. in general, in Jess, you gotta edit and get it out and transcode all anywhere. And they knew that, and I knew the Adobe Premiere integration that really well. And so when you have the pressure of the studio, those kind of directors, yeah. high dollar stuff, and they have that pressure and they came through, and they're still doing it. So I figured Gave you it's confidence. been battle tested. Yeah, it gave you confidence yeah. that these guys know what's going on. Yeah. Because they've done it. They're they've been through the industry. fire. Yeah. yeah. Had to design it for themselves. I like that part too. Yes. Is that the, you know, they understand because they've done it. Yes. You know, they've been in yeah. that environment. That was a great thing about the Overdrive's team as well, is that they had not just tech, tech guys, like you said, but people from production and post that had to hammer it on their own. So they kind of eat, the, eat their own dog food in a way and got it done. So is most of your work now, like what resolution are you filming on and editing and? We're just HD. That's where all our shows are coming from. But uh -huh. we're doing originals, we're gonna start thinking about some 4K. But all our promos are shot in 4K. Oh, that's kind of interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it gives us more flexibility in post. We can like key things and um, push in shots and re realign the video as well as the stills. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have your own production crews that'll go out and Film. Yeah, we just bring some freelancers in, and we have our own staff to, to part that out. And, okay. Yeah. So yeah. we do all the in-house. In-house, we do all the, um, we call it design work, and the thought, and the planning, mm -hmm. and stuff. And we go out and get some people to execute. So when you're setting up your facility, you've got like a shared storage pool then? Yep. And do you keep all the workstations at the editorial bays that you might have? Yep. So we have 12 edit bays. 12, okay. Hanging off there, and we have four digitizing stations and a couple other digitizing systems. 
And then um, hanging out Vantage, we have a five node light speed render farm. And then we have probably about a dozen graphics guys. Mm -hmm. And they're all hitting this one system. So do you, do you use a 10 gig E as your main fabric? Or? Yeah, 10 gig E on all the guys that need it. So our edit bays and motion graphics. You know, all the admin and producers and other types are hanging off one gig. And then what about um, the system itself with your storage? Is it like a 40 gig E switch that Yeah, it's 40 gig in? from the storage up to the switch, mm -hmm. the Mellanox switch, and then um, fan out from there. Yeah, do you use all those edit bays at once? Is it yeah. that? It does. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, and then system is pretty responsive. Yeah. No issues. None at all. So, yeah. 12 people editing, mostly HD, some 4K, possibly mm -hmm. all at the same time. Oh, yeah. And it's all working just fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've even had some people come through as a reference kind of thing, just check it out and said, they had some 4K um, raw stuff and we put it in there and they just like, yeah, that's great. That's while all the other stuff during the day was going on. We just took a bay out, let them try it out, and they loved it. Yeah. So, I know there's some future proofing in there already. Well, that's yep. great. You can expand it pretty easily yeah. by adding additional chassis and yep. yeah. connecting them in. Yep. On your hard drive size, I'm just curious. So you have 360 60. terabytes, you said. What size drives do you put in there? You know what? I don't even know. Oh, OK. They just I take just, care of it for you. I said, yeah. here's a list of my requirements. And they, they spec it, it. And then they gave it to me, and it works. Yeah. They I just, usually know those things, but they take care of it so much. It's like, uh, That's a great thing. Yeah. You don't even have to get into the granular detail. No. You just know you can. Yeah, they tell me these are switches we recommend. Mm -hmm. Got those, and so, yeah, worked out really well. What about security? You've got all these workstations connected to a central storage repository. Yep. Are you concerned about somebody putting in a flash drive? Or? I work really closely with my IT team, and they manage my computers and take care of that part. So, no. Well, from a post perspective, is there any like, new technology you're looking at that seems interesting you guys might want to acquire? or? The social and marketing, they're always looking for the next thing. Uh -huh. So we've done some 360 on a couple of shows, from behind the scenes and other things like that. That's worked out pretty well. It was tough because it's been a, year, a couple of years ago, and you know, the tools weren't it's, quite what they are now. And the tools are such flux. I mean, they, they iterate so fast. Yeah, yeah, they. Do. And so, like you said, they're much better now, and the system we have here is much better. So, they might be gun shy to go back to it, but uh, I think I'm looking for that. And then, yeah, the 360. I think it's well, the immersive video. I think it's it's can get better. So we might look at that again. Um, but for us, we're ad driven. So where we can put ads in, always looking for that. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I was just thinking with some of the other formats like 360, you know, you need, no. depending on how you do it, I mean, in theory, you could be using 22 2K or 22 4K cameras. Yeah. Then you could stitch all that together yeah. if you want somebody to have a super immersive environment. Yeah. Then that puts a lot of pressure on the post, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, I would love to have that as a need, so I can go to Open Judge. Hey, let's solve this new problem and get the U.S. <laughs> toys. Right. Yeah, that would be amazing. And they, but they've seen a lot of stuff, so I, I have confidence that they'll be my first call. Do you guys do out. a lot of compositing too? A little bit, not too much. Our motion graphic guys do that, and they do all that in 4K, and After Effects. So, yeah. so After Effects and yeah. Premiere, your two big things. Yeah. And they have those connected pretty well now, Adobe, so you can do some yeah. pretty neat things. And yep, some good round tripping. We also do some Cinema 4, uh, Cinema 4D, uh -huh. but um, that's about it. Not huge, heavy model work, anything like that. Th any thoughts about doing things in the cloud at all, or do you just prefer to have everything right there? I've thought about the cloud, but as I price things out, it's not quite there for me yet. Yeah. Um, I am looking at some technology to edit in the cloud and have some, um, instead of full res, have a proxy in the cloud that would be good enough to mm -hmm. broadcast in the case of emergency. So living in California and the office being in California, you've got to be conscious of that. What happens if my office goes away, I still need to deliver some shows. So I'm looking at different technologies for that. Why would your office go away in California? Earthquakes. And oh. My office, oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and my office is literally in tsunami zone. Is so, it a tsunami zone? Yeah, we're one mile from the beach. Oh, in your Santa Monica area? Or? Yeah, in Playa, in Playa Vista. Oh, really? So in Marina del Rey, there's a slew that goes right up there, and that's, that's where it's at. That's right. So right behind the marina, kind of there? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I used to row there when I was a kid at UCLA. Oh, really? Do they still yeah. do that? You see the... Some, I don't see it too much. Yeah. Well, I'm in my cubicle all the time. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in yeah, my yeah, office. Yeah. So. yeah. That was a beautiful place to be, though. I yeah. Mean, for living, it's a gorgeous place. Yeah. A lot it's great to be there. To get there is sometimes difficult. It's LA. You got it's traffic. worse than it was you probably when I was there. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, gosh, it's so good having you on the program. All right. You know, we, we wish you the best and, you know, Thank continue you. on your success. And hopefully we'll catch up. Maybe we can go ahead and come out to your facility someday. And yeah, come on out. Yeah. Love yeah, to show yeah, you around. Thanks. Appreciate it. Good talking.